Jesus is the friend you should know. Amen? Amen. We are going to conclude our series of messages for this fall sermon series on Jesus, the friend that you should know. So if you have your bulletin inside, there's an outline. This has some blanks, some scriptures, and some things to help you follow along with the message. If you missed any of the previous messages, I would encourage you and, and uh, ask you to get online, check out some of those. Um, and the outlines are available. If you need them, I would be glad to email, email them to you as well. I love this opening scripture on the top of your outline. It's the first scripture I have here on the slide behind me from 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. The Apostle Peter reminds us this, set, but in your hearts, set apart Christ as Lord. Now, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. What a powerful packed verse that is. Amen. We, we have this friend named Jesus. We have this relationship with a God who loves us and who is the God of all creation, who sent Jesus, who became Lord of Lords and someday will return to be King of Kings. And, and yet his desire is to call us friends, to have that relationship with us. And then he has given to us this mission, this responsibility to go and to share him with others around us. And it amazes me that in all the ways that God could choose to share the message of Jesus, he would choose you and me, the church, to do that. That amazes me. That God could, would say, as, in broken, as broken and as imperfect as we are, he still wants to use us in a mighty way to fulfill his mission of sharing Jesus. So as I wrap this series up, as we conclude the, these thoughts of this, this friend that, that once we have a relationship with, our first desire should be to find others who would have a relationship with them, to teach them about Jesus so that they in turn will teach others about Jesus and fulfill this mission that God has given to us, his church. I, I want to share with you some very practical, easy ways that I think we can do that. Now on your outline, the first thing I want to look at though are some fears that sometimes hold us back from sharing Jesus. And, and let me know if any of these are something that maybe you have identified with before. The first blank is this. Sometimes we have the fear that I don't know enough to share about Jesus. Have you ever been there? Have you ever been, you know, you've sat and you've heard these kind of sermons before. I mean, you, you know, you're kind of like that deer in the headlight stare of here it comes. I know what I need to do. I, I know I need to share Jesus. I, I know that I'm called to be, you know, to go into all the world to preach and teach the good news. To share. And I know I should, but I mean, I really, I don't know how, if I know enough. I mean, I don't, I don't know the verses. I haven't memorized the points and I, I just, I don't know. And I love the fact that the Bible says in that passage we read a, a, right above that, to give the reason for the hope that, whose hope is it that you're supposed to share? That you have. It's not the hope the preacher has. It's not the hope that the elders have. It's, it's not the hope that anything has. But it says, what is the hope that you have? Sharing Jesus is not about having all the right answers. Because I don't have all the right answers. But I know the one who does. And we have the word of God. Now listen, I do believe as simple as it is to say, here's the reason for the hope I have. We've talked about the idea of sharing your story. Here's who I was before Jesus. Here's how I met Jesus. And here how my, how, is how my life has changed since I have met Jesus. And now I would like you to meet Jesus because I think he could change your life the way he changed mine. And there are other religious belief systems. There are other organizations that have changed and transformed people's lives that maybe have nothing to do with God. So I do think there needs to come a point that you should know some of God's word to the point that you can say, here's what the Bible says about Jesus. Here's what we believe about salvation, right? And it doesn't mean you have to know it all. It doesn't mean you have to explain everything. It just means that I'm going to share God's word in such a way that people can understand it with an emphasis on salvation. And let me tell you something else. Some of you may, this may be the first time you ever hear this. So listen to me because you really need to hear this. It is okay to tell somebody you don't know something, especially if you don't know it, right? 
Because a lot of times we kind of get in that corner of, I don't know what the answer is to this. So then we just kind of make something up, right? Because we, we feel like we have to have some kind of answer. And we got to feel in the way. And, and I've got to the point in my life, there are things I don't understand that people will bring up. I'll be like, you know, I don't know. I really don't. But let me tell you what I do know. Here's the hope that I have in spite of the fact that I don't know the answer to that question, right? You don't have to know it all to share Jesus. Number two, fill in this next blank. Sometimes the fear is not do I know enough, but am I good enough? Am I good enough? Do I have my own ducks in a row before I start to go talk to somebody else about their ducks they may have out of line, right? Am I good enough to share Jesus with someone else? Now, a lot of times this is something that will affect you when it's somebody that you feel knows you well, right? Like it's, it's one thing to share Jesus with a complete stranger who doesn't know anything about you. But when you start to tell other people about Jesus and they're the ones who can start to tell us about things you used to do, well, then it changes a little bit, right? I remember back in the 1990s, uh, we had a big church campaign that took place at the Stop My Church of Christ in Byersville, Ohio. They were a part of, I was a teenager in the youth group at the time, and it was called One Nation Under God. And there was going to be this special Sunday, kind of like a bring a, back, bring a friend to church or, or a national back to church kind of Sunday that just churches nationwide were getting together. And one of the things that we did in the 90s was a door knocking campaign. And if you ever do door knocking campaigns, you remember doing that? Yeah. And I can remember be, being told that I was going to do this. And we had these little pamphlets and we had these stickers. We were supposed to go knock on doors. I didn't think it was a really big deal to go up to a door of somebody I don't know, knock on the door and say, hey, we're going to have a National Back to Church campaign on Sunday at the Stop Nine Church of Christ in Byersville, Ohio. Service starts at 10 o'clock. Would you like to come? Here's a pamphlet. Thanks. Bye. You know, I mean, that, that was kind of my, my, my routine, right? That's what you had to do. But when it came... When it came to somebody like in my hometown or somebody, you know, because I grew up in a part of, of you, know, you know, I mean, like my whole hometown was like the size of the population of Ham Lane. You know what I mean? I just, so everybody knew everybody, right? And so you're knocking on a door and then here's little Chad Donnelly, you know, hey, you want to come to church? You go to church. I mean, that was my fear. It never happened, but that was my fear, right? That was the thought in the back of my head that if they know what I'm like, if they know what I have done, who am I to share Jesus with someone like that? And it's, it almost, to me, looking back, I think, how foolish that I'm willing to talk to a complete stranger about Jesus, but my friends and family, I was afraid to do that. You ever been there? Now, here's the good news. When it, uh, I'll go ahead and, and answer this question for you. If you have a fear, if you wonder, am I good enough? No, you're not, right? And, and neither am I. And yet God still, this is what amazes me about our God. God still wants to use us to tell other people about him, even though we're not good enough. How awesome is that? So God says, I want to use you. You don't have to know it all. Yes, you don't, you don't have it all together. Every one of us can say, hey, I may not have it all together, but I know this guy named Jesus. He's a friend you should know. I don't have all the answers. I, I don't have all my ducks in a row, but I have a hope in him that I would like to share with you. Here's one more. Fill in this third blank. Sometimes our fear is, well, how will they respond to me, right? What if when I knock on the door, they slam the door in my face? What if when I tell them about Jesus and the hope that I have in him, what if they make fun of me? What if, what if they counsel me online, right? Or what if I get, you know, marked by Instagram for sharing something that goes against their community standards because, you know, you said something about what, I, I mean, we have all these things. What will they say? How will they respond? Now, the good news about this is when it comes to sharing Jesus, all you're supposed to do is share Jesus. You're not the one who does the conversion. You're not the one that does the transformation. God does that. God is the one who can work through you and with the power of his Holy Spirit, change and transform lives. That's not, that's not your responsibility. The Bible says just to share your faith. It doesn't say you have to convert anybody, right? You just put it out there. People are going to accept it. People are going to reject it. Sometimes it seems like somebody rejected it when really that started to bubble something in the back of their head that later on somebody else maybe says something to them and they start to put the pieces together like, oh, maybe there's something to this Jesus stuff. Right? Now, one thing, if you notice, 
about these three fears, and I was being polite. I wanted to call them excuses. Three things about these three fears or three excuses. Notice what they all have in common. Do I know enough? Am I good enough? How will they respond to me? Me, me, me. I, I, I. What about, what if they think about this about me? What if I bought this? What if they don't accept me? Here's the good news. Fill in this blank on your outline. The fact is that uh, it's not about me and it's all about him, right? I mean, all these fears, all these excuses are null and void because I don't know enough. I'm not good enough. And they may not accept me, but it's not about me. It's all about Jesus. We're not going around telling people, hey, we're better than you because we know Jesus. We're saying, hey, I feel like I'm better off because I know Jesus and he's a friend that you should know, right? It's not about me. It has nothing to do with me. It has all to do with Jesus, has all to do with God. We're not going around saying that I know it all. We're, not, we're just saying, let me introduce you to the one who does know it all. His name is Jesus. I cannot fix all your problems, but let me introduce you to someone who has come into my life, and I still have problems, but now I have a hope that I want to tell you about because of Jesus, and I think he's a friend that you should know. I love what the Apostle Paul says in this next scripture. When he went to the church in Corinth, when he preached and he taught and he shared Jesus and he started the church there, he says, when I came to you, brothers, I didn't come with elegance of superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now, I came to you in weakness and fear and with trembling, and my message and my preaching were not with these wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith may not rest in man's wisdom, but on God's power. I am so glad that your faith does not have to rest in any man's wisdom, but it's completely and totally on God's power. That's good news. And when it comes to sharing Jesus, that's what I'm called to do. Share Jesus. Yes, I don't know it all. I certainly don't have it all together. They may or may not accept me, but I just need to share Jesus. I hear people say things like, well, you just need to have faith. You just need to believe. Okay, but faith in what? Believe in what? Well, we think, we believe, the Bible teaches, I'm convinced it's Jesus. And he's a friend you should know. Let me give you something else. Maybe those fears or those excuses aren't your problem. Maybe we have some misunderstandings about what it means to share Jesus. So fill a couple of these in. Uh, here's some misconceptions. First one is this. Sharing Jesus is not a debate. Sharing Jesus is not a debate. You're not called to be a debater for Christ, right? That's not your job. You don't need to do that. Sharing Jesus is not about arguing my point. It's not about arguing my beliefs. It's not about, you know, arguing my doctrine. It's not about describing or, or arguing why my church is right and yours is wrong, why Christians are better than non-Christians, and none of that, right? Because we, we really, we're not better. We're just better off because we have Jesus. And, and, and when it comes to sharing Jesus, I, I'm not in it to debate with someone. You see this happen all the time online, right? There are some people who just, they have no desire to hear anything you have to say or share. They just want to argue. They just want to debate. D don't get sucked into that. Especially don't get sucked into it online. I mean, none of you are going to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years from now, none of you are going to be on your deathbed and be like, you know, I wish I would have spent more time online arguing with a stranger from Minnesota about why I believe something he disagreed with. I mean, none of you are going to do that, I assume, right? So, so don't waste your time. You're not called to debate for Jesus. It, it's not a debate when it comes to sharing my faith. The second thing is this, sharing Jesus is not a lecture or a sermon. You can share Jesus through a lecture. I hope we're sharing Jesus in our sermons for those of us who preach and teach. But that's not what you're called to do. You don't have to be a gifted orator. You don't have to have, you know, a good opening joke, three, three points, a poem, and a good conclusion, right? I mean, the, the, sharing Jesus, it, it's not just like a, a sermon. You don't have to be a public speaker to share Jesus. A third one is this. Sharing Jesus is not a sales appointment. Sharing Jesus is not a sales appointment. You are not a salesman for Christ. That's not what you're called to do. You're just called to share it. 
There are some people, there are some people who are very good and natural when it comes to sales, right? You've met people like this, haven't you? Have you ever had somebody talk you into something you absolutely did ha had no need, no desire for, no use for, and somehow they talked you into it, right? I, I remember Christine and I bought, bought our first Kirby vacuum cleaner. I, and if, how many of you, be honest, how many of you bought a Kirby vacuum cleaner before? How many of you bought it because of a door-to-door -door salesman that came to your house? Yeah, right? They come and they do this demonstration and they are slick, buddy. I mean, they know how to, man, you need this. I mean, if you've got to sell one of your cars, the kidneys and, you know, enslave, indenture servant, one of your children, this is something you need to have. And, I do, I need to have. I mean, there are some people who are like, most of us are not, right? Most of us, that's why most of us aren't door-to-door -door salesmen. I mean, and when it comes to sharing Jesus, I'm glad to know that I'm not trying to, to make a sales pitch. You, you don't have to buy Jesus. He already paid the price in full, right? That's good news. So it's not a debate. It's not a sermon. It's not a lecture. It's, it's not a sales appointment. Here's the fact. Fill this in. Sharing Jesus is about, you ready for this? Sharing Jesus. That's what it's all about. You say, Chad, well, duh. And I, and I have to respond by saying, well, duh, because we, we get so caught up in these other things. Oh, what if I don't know enough? What if I'm not good enough? What if they reject me? It's not about you. Well, well, I, I'm not a very good debater. It's not a debate. Well, I can't get up and give a sermon. It's not a sermon. Well, I, I don't know how to sell Jesus. To you. you don't have to sell him. He's paid it all. Your job is to share Jesus because sharing Jesus is all about sharing Jesus. He's a friend that we should know. He's someone who has come and changed and transformed our life. And what we're wanting to do is to share it with other people. It's not about me. It's about sharing Jesus. It's not about knowing enough or being good enough. It's about sharing Jesus. It's not about will you accept my message. It's about sharing Jesus whether you accept him or not. It's not a debate. It's not a lecture. It's not a sermon. It's not a sales pitch. It's all about sharing Jesus because he's a friend you should know. So in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, part of what was read for us this morning by Jim, it says, salvation is found in no one else. Peter here talking about Jesus. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which men must be saved. You say, Chad, that's a pretty exclusive statement right there, isn't it? I mean, that's not something that is going to fly very well in our current cancel culture climate that we find ourselves in. That's not very loving. That's not very accepting. This is where people like to debate. And again, it's not, when you're sharing Jesus, it's not a debate. You're sharing the hope that you have. But that's where people like to, oh, so you're saying I go to hell if I believe something you don't believe? No, what we're saying is that Jesus is the only one who paid the price so you don't have to go to hell. You know, we, you know the Christianity, and we need to do a study on this sometimes. It's really interesting to look at some of the other major world religions and beliefs. Christianity is the only major belief system that has this concept of a God who was willing to pay a price to die for you, to justify and to ransom you, to pay for your sins so that you can have a relationship, eternity, and everlasting life with him. That's what sharing Jesus is all about. That's why there is no other name under heaven or earth by which we must be saved rather than just Jesus and Jesus alone. It's not about my view. It's not about my opinions. It's not about my likes or my dislikes. It's not about doctrine. It's not about churches or buildings or worship styles or anything else. It's all about Jesus. He's a friend you, know, I, you should know. I just want to introduce him to you. So let me give you a really simple way that you do it. Fill in these next two blanks on your outline. To share Jesus, all you need is a moment and a message. To share Jesus, you need a moment and you need a message. There's a great story in John chapter 4. We don't have the time. I'm not going to take the time to, to recap the story with you. Most of you know it. If you don't know it, I encourage you to go back and read John chapter 4 at some point today and re-familiarize yourself or read for the first time the story of this interaction between Jesus and the woman at a well. And when Jesus meets her, it becomes obvious to her that this is the Messiah, that this is the Christ, that this is someone, after she met him, she knew that this is someone that you need to meet. 
This is someone that you need to know. So the Bible says she goes back to town, and in John chapter 4, verse 29, she says, Come and see a man who told me everything I did. Could this be the Christ? Could this be the Messiah? Look how simple her message is. Come and see. Could this be? That's it, right? I mean, if you've ever felt you weren't qualified to share Jesus, take a look at this lady's resume, right? And this is a lady who made some big mistakes in her life. And yet, she's going because she met Jesus, she needed to go and find someone else that she knew needed to meet Jesus. This woman wasn't an evangelist. She didn't go to preaching school or seminary. She had a pretty messed up life, but she met Jesus, and it was just so natural for her as soon as she met Jesus and the way he impacted and transformed her life just in that moment, just in that meeting, she had to go back and say, come and see you got to see this guy. You need to meet this person. I mean, this is someone that I think you need to know. And sharing Jesus is just about sharing Jesus. You don't read about any arguments. You don't read about any debates. She's not trying to sell Jesus. She's simply saying, hey, I want you to meet somebody that I just met. You need to meet this guy. And all you need is a moment and a message. I mean, it is really this simple. Um, Kevin, let me, can I, bug, can I use you just for a second? Because I know you won't be too embarrassed after last Sunday. I can bring you up. Kevin, and Jim, let me get you just for a second. Stand up here. Let's say just for a moment that Kevin and Jim don't know each other, but, but I'm friends with Kevin. Kevin and I are good friends, and I'm friends with Jim. Jim and I are good friends. They just haven't met each other yet. They don't know each other. Now, because I'm friends with Kevin and what I know about Kevin, and because I'm friends with Jim and what I know about Jim, I think that they should meet each other. I mean, there are things about Jim that I love and I appreciate that I know that other people who meet Jim would love and appreciate him. And there are things about Kevin that I love and appreciate. He's cool to hang out with and he'll go to see movies with you and he buys these really large popcorns and he can't eat it all so he shares, right? And so there are things about Kevin that I love and I appreciate. So I want him to meet. Now, if Kevin has never met Jim and Jim has never met Kevin, it's as simple as I'm going to get these two together and say, hey, Kevin, I want you to meet a really good friend of mine. His name is Jim. Jim, I want you to meet a really good friend of mine. His name is Kevin. And then they meet and boom, it is that simple. Amen. It is that simple. You guys good to sit down. Thank you very much. Give them a hand. They're good props, huh? That's what sharing Jesus is all about. It's just about sharing Jesus. It's saying, listen, I, I don't know it all. I don't have my life in, in perfect order. And, and I, I'm not trying to debate or argue with you. I'm not trying to give you some sales pitch. I just, I've met someone in my life who has changed and transformed my life. And in spite of who gets elected on Tuesday or who the president is, in spite of the craziness of gas prices, even though I'm going through some sicknesses and some health problems I don't understand, even though my finances aren't where they need to be, even though I wish I could get this job or this promotion that I have, man, I still have this hope. And it's all because of this guy, Jesus. He's a friend of mine that I think you should know, and I want you to meet him. That's it. It's, it's a moment, and it's a message. So real quickly, let me give you a very, very simple easy message that you can share when God provides those moments for you to share Jesus, to introduce this friend that your friends should know. John 3, 16 is one of the most popular Bible verses in the world. I would like to believe that if I asked every one of you walking out this door, almost if not every one of you could in some way at least parts of recite this verse, yeah? For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That verse says that God loved and gave. That's a pretty simple message, amen? God loved and he gave. And, and I love the fact that the Bible says he so loved. I so love that God so loved you and me and the entire world that he gave his only son, Jesus that's why. It's not a, here's why I'm right, you're wrong. It's not a, boy, that sure is a, an exclusive, their salvation. No, that's who, because God loved us, that's who he gave. And then another popular verse that many of you know, Mark 16, 16. Whoever believes and is baptized 
will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. So we believe and have. Isn't that a simple message? It's powerful. Absolutely true. God loved and he gave. We believe and we have. It's really that simple. God loved and he gave us Jesus. We believe in Jesus. We are baptized into him. And because of our belief, we have salvation that comes through Christ and through Christ alone. So that last scripture on your outline, Acts chapter 4, verse 29. After Paul and, and, or Peter and, and John had been before the Sanhedrin, after they had been threatened with death, threatened with being, well, they were beaten and flogged, threatened with imprisonment. When they told him, don't talk anymore about Jesus, the first thing they did was get back with the church and they had said, Lord, enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Man, that's my prayer for you as a church. My prayer for you as a church is that we, as God's people, would share Jesus with everyone who comes into our life because we truly, sincerely believe that he is a friend that you should know. Let me pray for you. Lord, I ask a blessing today upon all those here today and those who are hearing this. Lord, I pray that you would give us those moments and you would plant in our hearts the message that we can share, the hope that we have. Help us to always be prepared. I pray that we would spend time in your word to allow you to just speak to us so that we can hide your word in our heart that we might not sit against you and that we might help others to see and to hear your word. Lord, I pray that as a church, we would understand our mission of loving you above and beyond all, of loving each other and then sharing that love with those outside of these walls, with others who need to hear about you and experience the love that only comes from you, that we might obey your command to make disciples who would make disciples so we would fulfill this mission that you have given us here. Lord, we believe that Jesus is the friend that we should know. We're so thankful for the relationship we have with him because you loved us and you gave us Jesus. And Lord, we believe and we receive. Let us share that message to a lost, hurting world who needs to hear it so much. We pray this in Jesus' name and amen.